Township of Precipity Troy Hills, Township Council Special Meeting, December 29th, 2015. Meeting call to order by myself at 4.05 p.m. Please rise for flag salute. Stanton, if you would. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Carifi. Here. Mr. DePiro. Here. Mr. Peluso. Present. Mr. Stanton. Here. Mr. Valori. Here. Others present. Mayor Barberio, LNM Sandman, Business Administrator, John Inglesino, Esquire, Township Attorney, and M. Cucci, CFO, Leslie Miller, Deputy Register. The agenda of this meeting is the extent known is as follows public hearing and adoption of Ordinance 2015, 29, Ordinance approving the financial agreement for long term tax exemption by and between the Township of Precipity Troy Hills and BT Property Urban Renewal Company, LLC. Discuss and take action on resolutions awarding a contract for health benefits to insurance design administrators, authorizing 2015 budget appropriation transfers, and authorizing an agreement with the City of Jersey City, the Jersey City Municipal Utilities Authority, and the Township of Precipity Troy Hills to supply bulk water to Precipity Troy Hills. Any other action reasonably related thereto may also be taken. Formal action may or may not be taken. Statement of compliance. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Law by filing the notice in the office of the Township Clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the Municipal Building on December 21st, 2015, where it has remained posted since that date. Legal notice appeared in a daily record on December 22nd, 2015, and was voted by fax out of local newspapers on December 21st, 2015. Okay, ordinances, second reading public hearing. Mr. DePiro. Ordinance number 2015-29, an ordinance approving the financial agreement for long-term tax exemption by and between the township of Possipony Troy Hills and BT Property Urban Renewal Company, LLC. Notice, a notice for the ordinance above was published in a daily record, the official newspaper of the township of Possipony Troy Hills on December 18, 2015. <coughs> Motion to accept Ordinance 2015, colon 29. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Peluso. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. <coughs> this time I'll entertain a motion to open up public hearing on this ordinance and this ordinance only. Motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Peluso. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah, all right. Um, so just so that the public is aware, make a couple of uh, prefatory comments that may answer some of your questions uh, or may not. Uh, this is another important step in the, uh, in, in the redevelopment process that will result in bringing UPS uh, to Parsippany uh, to construct an approximately 200,000 square foot office building uh, on site that is currently a, a vacant land uh, and um, is, as I say, the result of a process that began uh, back in December of 2013 when the council first uh, passed a resolution uh, that initiated the redevelopment process. And there were many steps along the way uh, that were taken, uh, public votes, uh, both by the council and by the planning board, that resulted in um, approval of a redevelopment plan, site plan approval, uh, area need of redevelopment report, public hearing on that by the planning board, uh, and now a, uh, a, a financial agreement uh, that has been negotiated uh, by the municipality and UPS. Um, that is what they call a payment in lieu of taxes. Now, UPS has been very upfront in indicating that they had the option of either staying in New Jersey and relocating their facility from Bergen County, Paramus, I believe it is, to uh, this new facility in Parsippany, or uh, moving down to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Marietta, Georgia. Um, and that there were two main uh, things that they needed in order to stay, to, New, to stay in New Jersey. One was 
a Grow New Jersey grant, uh, which I believe the amount was $40 million or so, which they received from the state. And the other was a payment in lieu of tax agreement with uh, Parsippany. And they were upfront about that, not only to Parsippany, but they were upfront about that in their application uh, to uh, New Jersey um, EDA, Economic Development Authority, in applying for their Grow New Jersey uh, grant. And so members of the administration, um, the business administrator, um, and uh, Ms. Stanman and Ms. Cucci negotiated um, a financial um, agreement that is hugely beneficial uh, to the township of Parsippany and to its uh, taxpayers. Some of the financial benefits of, of this arrangement are, first of all, there's an application fee, which is the smallest benefit, is about $6,000. Um, there's also a 2.5 percent of project cost to Parsippany's Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Um, Mr. Cassis, who's here tonight, estimates that fee to be approximately $600,000. They've paid $300,000 already, uh, and uh, they would pay another 300000 That number will be adjusted based upon Mr. Cassis's uh, computation of the project cost at the time of a CO. Um, there is a 2 percent annual administrative fee over and above the pilot amount which, if you calculate it over a 30-year period, which is the duration of the agreement, comes to about 800,000, comes to $800,000 for Parsippany. There are, of course, uh, connection fees, which are significant, but I, I don't know what they are. Um, and there are the pilot payments. Now, those pilot payments total just under $40 million over 30 years, $39,428,220 to be exact. Um, if the land were to be remain vacant. Uh, and right now, the land uh, generates approximately $250,000 a year as vacant land. It's 248 and change, call it 250. Um, if that land were to re remain vacant, even if you increase the land tax by 2 percent per year, and as we know over the last several years, <coughs> Parsippany has held uh, tax increases to well <coughs> under 2 percent, but even if you were to be very conservative and increase that uh, tax rate by 2 percent, then over the 30-year period, Parsippany would realize $10 million uh, from, from the value of this property. So over 30 years, based upon the deal that's been negotiated, it's a $30 million windfall, profit, advantage, whatever word you want to call, uh, for Parsippany taxpayers. And in addition to that, of course, there will be UPS headquarters, uh, with uh, hundreds of jobs, uh, high-paying jobs, and uh, so those are essentially, I think, the uh, the terms and the uh, and the benefits of the financial agreement. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, if any members of the public would like to come up, please state your name and address and sign in. You'll be given three minutes. There's a schedule, and you know, it's it's on for tonight. Obviously, the council has had this well in advance, um, and has been apprised, and they've had all the different uh, the drafts. I'm not blaming you. Yeah, no, but this is well, it's a deliberative document until it's it's voted on. On on Exhibit D of the pilot agreement, you, you will see. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, have you have other right, questions? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, New Jersey gave me the grant at part of the tax dollars, three million dollars. This is a pilot program. None of this money goes to the school board. Correct. Okay. Right. Yeah. Correct. Um, what was that eight hundred thousand dollars though, John? Is that a one-time? No. It's it's each year you pay two percent of the. Um, of the of the char of the service charge uh, as an administrative fee. Okay. As you all know, I spoke about pilot on the ladies and gentlemen a year ago on uh, other situations in town. <clears throat> Mayor, this is our first pilot in Persephone project. I don't know. 
Well, there's there, there's a there actually was a pilot for for Brookside, but it was under a different set of circumstances. Yeah, that's, right. Right. That's, uh, it was housing through the New Jersey HMFA that resulted in that. No, that's good. I think this is actually Dan's giving me a thumbs up, so I got that one right. Dan gave me a thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, Danny. Um, the only thing is, and I ask, you know, it's not new to us. You know the traffic's going to be a lot more traffic. I live on that side of town. 202 is already a parking lot for two hours in the morning, two hours at night. I'm not sure what the ingress and egress is going to be from this project. I know that's not going to end the other night. Uh, water. Going to be less water going back into our TG wells and what have you. It's underground. So, you know, all that's got to be taken into account. UPS is an excellent company. So, they've been an excellent neighbor over here, uh, close to the old Daily Record building. Uh, a lot of the people that work for UPS live in town. That's all I have to say. No school board. That's correct. And, and the other thing is, it's 750 jobs. That's quite, quite significant. And um, we'll be working, we'll, we'll be, well, Parsippany is beautiful this time of year. And um, we'll, be, we'll be working um, closely, closely with them, uh, with the UPS. And uh, one of the things, you talk about traffic, that's all stuff that still needs to be worked through. And we'll be, you know, they, they'll work uh, very well with us. They're a reputable company. Uh, Nick Pomiak, uh, Lake Hiawatha. Uh, if the state has already given UPS, I believe, this uh, set of $40 million <coughs> or some kind of a break or something, I don't understand why Persephone has to give uh, UPS a break for something that they've already given a <coughs> tax break for, and they would probably move to Persephone anyway. The part that disturbs me is that we're calling it a redevelopment plan not a reason it's not a redevelopment plan it's new land development and it happens to be on an environment mentally sensitive <coughs> landscape another aquifer recharge we're going to we're going to yeah. pave over like roy said that has to be considered uh i walk that landscape it has a lot of water it's called hydraulic soils they're very important to environmental health uh, most of them will be eliminated. Uh, and if you divide here, if you divide eight hundred thousand dollars into thirty, you come out to twenty-six thousand six hundred and sixty-six. That magic number that keeps on coming back. Okay, that's the three point. sixes yeah. a year for Persephone. So I, I don't, I don't think it's worth it. And the, the high-paying jobs, are these going to be jobs for precipity or are these jobs going to be transferred from the already employed people who are working in precipity? Are they going to be fired and rehired? I'd like to hear exactly how high-paying these jobs are and, you know, their benefits. Are these real UPS employees or are they subcontractors? Because when I went to a few of these meetings, and by the way, the, uh, the tax break was never brought up at any of those meetings that I that I remember. I went to a, a couple of them. But uh, are these real UPS employees? Are they? And uh, the point I was making, they said that they the tra we didn't have to worry about the traffic because the traffic was going to be intermittent, meaning that they weren't going to do 40 hour a week. They were going to be there certain days of the week, but there'd be a 1,002 uh, parking lot, parking lot for 1,002 vehicles. 30 seconds, just so you know. All right, and that's all I have to say. I just don't think it's worth the loss of the quality of life and where the uh, cumulative effects on our water supply it's, it's all going to it's all going to catch up with uh, with Parsippany. Throw water view and everything else in there. We're not recognizing our environmentally sensitive uh, areas. Of, like our master plan says, it's all it's all going to catch up with us eventually. And this, in a true sense, is really not redevelopment. So I'll leave it at that. One of the things I'd like to mention, Nick, in in, in working with the people from UPS, my understanding is the salaries are 
you know, upwards of two hundred thousand um, dollars. They are here if, if they need to speak to. Are they truly UPS employees? And I, well, I would like. I don't to, know that it's relevant to. It, it, it's not really relevant to. Well, they're here. And could they just answer the question? <laughs> All right, then we'll let it go. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, see no one else come forward. I entertain a motion to close the public hearing on this ordinance. Motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Peluso. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and the hearing held thereon, now therefore be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and that a notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Peluso. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Resolution R2015-200. Mr. Peluso. Resolution designating BT Property Urban Renewal Company, LLC, as the redeveloper of the property known as Block 136, Block 43.3 in the Township of Forsyth Troy Hills and authorizing the execution of a redevelopment agreement with BT Property Urban Renewal Company, LLC, for the redevelopment of such property for office use in accordance with the redevelopment plan. Motion to approve the above resolution. Second. Motion made by Mr. Peluso, seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. This time, I entertain a motion to open up the public hearing. Motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Stanton, seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. If you come forward, please state your name and address. Sign in. You'll be given five minutes. You got Roy's. Pat Patacha, 182 Hawkins Avenue. I've got a few questions tonight. First of all, the first one I'll start off with is, once again, I'm a little concerned that we say that we're having an emergency meeting for one thing, and then we have other things on the agenda to be voted on. <coughs> uh, you're not giving the public the upfront that they're supposed to have. And w one of the biggest things being the Jersey City water renewal. That's a big one, and I've asked you guys to check into that contract, whether or not it is absolutely necessary for Persephone to keep forking out this money. And it's a part of the big development that's coming in, too. Are we doing it just because we want this development? <coughs> I think we've discovered we really don't really have a need for it. Um, but I, I would appreciate it. I know it. we usually wait to the end. Yeah. But um, this is so sensitive, and, and I did negotiate this. First of all, this is a requirement by the um, DEP. D yeah, by the DEP and the state of New Jersey. Parsippany needs to have another source of water, so this costs us two thousand two hundred and forty-eight dollars, so that we don't have to dig a well that will cost us millions of dollars to supply that excess water. This is water that we probably will never use, but we need to have another source of water by the DEP and all the state rigors because they say you have to supply water. This is not for growth. This is for in case there's a drought. They, they are very strict. And what this is, and we're going through the Jersey City uh, water. It should have been done a little while ago, but I just got involved in it. Um, what we did was we reached out uh, to them. Um, I spoke with the finance officer of the Jersey City MUA. I asked, I knew what my bulk rate was at this present time. It's less, it's going to be $22.48 for the bulk rate. And this is a requirement. This is an obligation. This is not something that we're doing for growth. It's, it's a requirement for Parsippany. For Parsippany. Is it a requirement for any other town? Every town. Every town. Denville, okay. I, I thank God that I was, I, on Black Birch was right next to 
the, M the, the Morris County MUA, and I was able to, for $33,000 that they fronted, I was able to have that second source of water that is a requirement. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's an obligation that we have to have. And going any place else wouldn't have been cheaper to go look any place else? Th no, this is a very good rate, and it's the bulk rate, and, and they do give to other places. And, and now I'm going to kid around a little bit. Plus, if they weren't so cooperative, I was going to just drill a hole over here and go to get the water directly. So uh, they yeah, were very right. cooperative. Uh, but seriously, um, I want to let you know that this is, this is what this is. This is not something. And again, it was the 11th hour, um, even though the gentleman said we would not shut off you know, the source if you needed that. Uh, it's an emergency source. That's a requirement. But what they did say was, um, you know, they would certainly keep supplying water again, then I apologize. We'll try to not do this, but I took advantage of the fact that there was a meeting. And now that you know what it is, it wasn't something that, I don't want to say it's pro forma, it's an obligation and a serious obligation. And I wanted to get it done before the end of the year. So that's, that's, that's straight. Can I, can I just give some older background if I can on this? Going, going back to when, this is not your time, this is my time. Okay, just want to make sure. To okay, yeah, sorry. It, it just Go, going was so Going back sensitive. to when uh, Frank Priori was the mayor, um, we did an, a, a, a groundwater analysis to see how much water we really had underground. And we projected if every piece of land in Parsippany were developed the way it was zoned, would we have enough water in the ground to cover all of Parsippany's future needs? We did that with the sewer treatment plant, too, with the 15 million gallon per day capacity. And the answer was, we have sufficient water in the ground to, keep, to meet all of Parsippany's needs. Now, that was our answer. So when the DEP came out with this requirement that we can only pump so many gallons yes. out of the ground, okay, they're looking at the whole state. We're looking at just Parsippany. Yeah, we have enough water right underneath us. But they're looking at the whole state. And those artesian wells, wherever they're filled from, the glaciers or wherever, um, they also feed other wells downstream. So we could draw a lot more out of there if we needed it in, in a severe drought, but further downstream they would be hurt. But we are using so the, Jersey City so water now so for residents. Yes. So the but I don't understand is, that. Then. Is, is protecting other towns by restricting how much water we can draw out of the ground. And that was the primary reason they wanted us to have an alternate water source. So if there is a severe drought, um, they don't. They want us to use that alternate source before we pull out every last ounce that we're entitled to out of the ground. Okay. Um, then my question would be, why are some residents on using that water? <coughs> They're not using that particular water. That's a million gallons in reserve. All we're doing is securing it for two thousand dollars. You know, uh, to make sure that. In I case thought w Jersey City water was being used in houses. That it is being. Uh, I, yeah, it is. Sure it there is. are some, but yes. this is this is a separate and apart yeah. from that. This it is, is separate. Yeah, as uh, yeah, as what Mike is referring to is, again, it was a protection of you know we could take all the water out of the wells because we're groundwater. Years ago in the 20s and the 30s, Jersey City was smart. They brought all the water out here. So they're all the you know the surface water is going down to Jersey City and they're sen sen selling it to Hoboken to us to um, okay. to uh, Lynnhurst. So I've I've and coming from Jersey City, I, I I'm very um, aware of <coughs> it. And like I said, they formed a, uh, an MUA. They used to have their own water utility, but now they're it's through the MUA. And I did um, work with them and say you know and th and the, the rate that we have is the rate that the bulk rate that all towns that are pursuing water from the Jersey City MUA are paying, you know, paying that rate. And I will tell you that the bulk rate today is um, more than the bulk rate will be starting January um, of 2016. Okay. By the way, that water tastes lousy. No kidding. It smells, too. Yes. Well, I always got the best cup of tea from Jersey City, and that was the water from up here. So, But I think it was because I was at my it mother's house. It must have been those tea leaves you used. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. <coughs> ah, okay. Um, all right. Uh, have we heard from Mr. Briscoe? Yeah. Is he going to be showing up? We're now going into a new year. This is dragging on and on. We need to get him in here to answer the questions that Mr. Ingolcino cannot. Um, you know, the only pockets that are getting full here are the attorneys. Taxpayers are losing money left and right. We're the ones that are being hurt. 
And was the letter sent to Divine? It was. It was. Did we receive a response yet? Um, I don't know if he responded to the letter, but he did. He did. There was a response from him with regards to dismissal. And that's all I know right now. I haven't spoke to Dennis. Okay. Um, well, we definitely need to get him in here. I mean, this is ridiculous. And my final question. is for Mr. Stanton. Oh. Brian, I know it's your last day up there. And uh, I do thank you. But as you know, I cannot let this go. Do you have any gumption to answer any of these questions that were no. broached to you back in January, March, and February of 2013 regarding the January 13th secret meeting? No. Yeah, okay. But you never told us what you wanted the uh, resumes and stuff for, so that kind of. But I do wish everybody a happy new year. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nicholas Homiak again, uh, Lake Hiawatha. Uh, there was no agenda listed when I looked for the meeting for today and I heard it was UPS because I would have brought some information to contradict what Mr. DiPairo said. Persephone gets 65 percent of its water from the Buried Valley Aquifer and he has, we have two additional uh, water sources, the Jersey City and the Morris County Municipal. Without those sources Persephone would not have enough water to sustain itself. If there is a drought where there, there will be water restrictions and then it will be us taking water, Jersey City taking water, you have less and less water. Once again, if you look at a map of the alleged redevelopment I could show it to you right here. The planning board was upset when I showed this. This, that's the block lot right there. You see in purple, that is an aquifer recharge area. That's the block 136, 43.3, and all around it. So you're going to be paving over this. You're going to be diminishing again what is 65% of a whatever water is going, going back to the wells. So now you're depending more and more on your private sources. If there's a drought, they can jack the prices and don't think that they won't, especially if it's privatized. Now, NJDP, I, th I think I explained this to the council before, they have a much lower standard for determining whether you have enough water or not. It, they, it's based on pumpage, and I believe it's five years. You've been pumping this amount of water out of your aquifer for five years. Well, guess what? You can keep on pumping it. The highlands, if we were in conformance, a lot of these things would, would be, we'd have solutions. And, we, and we'd, have, we'd have exact and smart development where it should be, whether it's necessary, number one, and where it should be, number two. But if we keep on ignoring, we don't, we, we're not protecting our wellheads, we're not protecting our recharge areas, and, and, and the result is going to be in the future catastro catastrophic. Uh, if UPS really wanted to come to Persephone in Morris County, where we have an overabundance of vacant office space, I can't see why they can't occupy an already uh, built building. And all the water equations and everything supposedly are built into this already. So now you're going you're gonna to come up with another equation that's just going to favor the developer and it's not going to be realistic 
when it comes to how it's going to affect the future of our, of our water. The highlands, and we go back into conformance any times, they look at the rate of recharge. What is your rate of recharge? That's what you depend on. NJDP has a lower standard, and I hate to say it, it's purposely to favor developers. And then they pretend that we have a disciplined society when everybody has to, we're all gonna conserve water and everything like that. Those things don't happen. They don't happen. And the Jersey City water, we, we do use it because we're paying for it. And I believe it's, I could be wrong, I, I, I could have brought the figure with me. I think it's $270,000 a year for a minimum of 247 million gallons, whether we use it or not. So no. to say that this new deal is based on a reserve I find that whole thing absurd to make sure we have enough water. 30 seconds. All right, we already have the two private sources because we don't have enough water. So take water view, take this, like I said, everything else, asking for trouble in the future. Asking for trouble in the future. And when you drink the water, can you really trust it? You ever think of why so many people get bottled water at the store? The people don't trust the water that they drink. And the water from Jersey City has a lot of contaminants. And I could have brought that information too if it was on the agenda that, the, that this deal with the Jersey City was coming up. So it's like a, another surprise attack. I thought we were here to talk about UPS. It's related to the water, but if we want to talk about water, I could have brought a lot of information. Thank you. Uh, you, may, may I g just give the, um, the details with regard to this? First of all, this is not a new deal. This is a renegotiated deal. In 2005, you had the same arrangement with the Jersey City uh, water, water, you know, water Department probably then. I don't believe it was. Um, it could have been an MUA, but I'm not sure. Uh, the thing is, um, that was a 10-year agreement, and then it expired. And re they ha approached us to ask us if we wanted to continue uh, receiving this additional water. And as I said, this is this is just water that is required for the emergency, um, you know. So that um, and we're obligated. It's you know you have to have a, you know this other source of water. It has nothing to do with those having that other water. This is in addition to it. This is a million gallons, and it's 22. 48, which is 2,000, it's right in the resolution, $2,248. So that's um, what we're paying to be in compliance with the DEP and compliance with um, Kevin Ryan, who is our water purveyor that needs an additional source of, of water. So this is a re not, re this isn't, this is just a continuation uh, and it is for five years as opposed to 10. Yeah, do you want to say anything? Roy Messman, Drive. I just want to say something, a few things. I want to sh I'm very happy to see that UPS stuck around. We've all been to enough of these meetings where the people get what they, you know, what they came for and then they leave. And that's very nice. You're going to be good neighbors. You're already good neighbors. Um, the other thing I think the public should know, that this property 20 years ago was approved for 290,000 square feet. It's in our master plan. You're only taking 200,000. Now, I understand what Nick is saying. I'm very concerned about the environment, too, and I'm sure everybody here, because somebody has to live somewhere, and they got to eat, and they got to drink. But uh, this is a good project, and I'm really proud that I'm really impressed that they stuck around, the whole staff. Uh, a couple things, though. As we hit the, the end of the year, we've had no snow. I don't think snow trucks had to go out this morning for salt. We must be doing pretty good with that budget then. And that money goes into that trust fund, right? Can't be used for anything else, right? That we, yeah, but so. What, that's my next question. What are these two transfers tonight, then? Yeah, now that's... Yeah, I'm done. That's oh, it. all right. <coughs> I think. That's common. Um, every year we do um, appropriation transfer. As you know, the budget is a living document, and uh, depending on changes that come up, um, certain number of things move around. Um, in particular, the first one, which is the one that moves around for payroll, we had in reserve $265,000 for the contracts that were being negotiated this year, and that's basically allocating it up into the different departments that need it. Okay. 
Yeah. And oh, but it had nothing to do with the emergency appropriations on. This is something totally different. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then that's that. okay. Yeah. 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 It just have something else came up. Oh, but okay. like the money, I don't, I don't know if you two can answer this. I know you're supposed to answer me on something from the last meeting, but I, for, I didn't bring those notes tonight because I was just like, Nick, I thought it was just going to be on this. Um, w w when will you transfer the snow money to the first of the year? Cause It'll be after the first of the year. Okay. But I don't mean that day. But We've I mean, also be purchased uh, salt. And okay. already. Oh, it's an inventory and all. So, yeah. Okay. We, we've done right. that. Thank you. Okay. Happy New Year. I'm going to miss Happy you. New Year. You're the only guy that really knows sports up here. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry, the mayor does. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> John. Okay, see no one else come forward, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Peluso. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Council President, before we um, entertain the next uh, resolution, um, I was uh, charged with a few things to make sure that they were provided to the council before um, we uh, took a look at this resolution. I'm pleased to say that uh, Mike has uh, has returned uh, for any questions. However, um, firstly, I would like to um, uh, state that uh, Councilman um, Peluso uh, required that in writing there was a document from both our attorneys as well as from our, uh, uh, from our auditor. That has been provided in great detail. That was placed in your box, and also we made sure that we, we sent it out to you. So that's the uh, first uh, thing of, the, of order. Um, the SOC report was something that was very important. If Ann wants to chime in, um, it, you know, if I missed something with regard to that, uh, because that is very um, important for the payment of um, claims. The other thing that um, uh, is very important to uh, note for the record is that I went um, – went through. As you know, um, the, um, the, the assistant administrator uh, has um, resigned and, and went on to another job. And um, so she did a lot of the working with the insurance. So um, I took, uh, took that on as a sacred trust to make sure that I would provide the information that you required. Last meeting, and as I asked if we could put this off for today's meeting, last meeting the council president asked me <coughs> would we be able to provide um, coverage uh, for our um, unions as well as for others that receive it, myself included, not in a union. And um, I said, the reason why I felt uncomfortable answering it, not, not because I'm, I'm not involved in self-insurance, which is one of the reasons why I didn't answer at the time, because the answer is yes and the answer is no. The thing is, is it's cost prohibitive. If you read the um, one, two, the four bullet points that I put in um, a letter that I addressed to mayor and council with regard to, you know, having a third party payer. If in fact the, um, the, we don't have a third party uh, pay, payer in place, this, my staff, myself, we are unable to provide the, the necessary um, commitment to provide for, yes, we have we have placed insurance in various for dental and for you know prescription and also for our medical but we need the third party payer and IDA performs that function um, you know I, I don't know if you want me to read and direct it but one of the point too if you did have an opportunity to read it at in, in, in depth the TPA provides a managed care network currently Amera Health, which affords a 65% discount on every, every in-network transaction. One, I couldn't take it over. I'm not, meaning I, me, uh, and we're not licensed. I'm not licensed. Number two, I can't, I don't know, how would I get 65% uh, I'm not, we don't have enough manpower to perform this. Um, so, for example, it says, if the township has $6 million worth of in-network claims and paid annually with no network, the cost of the township would be approximately $18 million. Another point was that when I looked at the breakdown that you had asked for, um, I looked at if, um, if, it, if this is costing us, with, which includes all the um, 
you know, all the, uh, uh, and I'll let Mike talk to it a little bit too, but if it includes all the things that are necessary to be the, the uh, TPA, the third party payer, um, and, and we, we try to even attempt the $10 million turns into approximately, this is approximately $30 million. And again, um, so we wouldn't be able to provide <laughs> the, 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 the prescription the, the, and, and be the, the research. We don't even have, we don't have enough skilled manpower to do that. That's why one of the last statements I do say is that's why we, um, my understanding is that furthermore, the exposure to the township would be in mi millions, as, we, as I just said, and I know of no public or private entity anywhere in the c country that manages their own medical program unless you're a insurance or a, a TPA uh, program, uh, and, and it would be cost prohibitive. So I ask for your consideration um, to work with me as, as a relatively new administration, an admi administrator taking on this, um, hopefully that we will have somebody else in-house. Um, Joe Strelick does a, 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 a great job, but it's, it's a big job even in-house to in, in work in concert with um, the, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, the insurance providers as well as the third party payer. I will also state that um, there is that commitment that Jackie will be <coughs> visiting all the, all the sites, going out to meeting with um, people so <coughs> that we get those claims paid. And then lastly, with Mike in the room, I will say, and I make this commitment and the sacred trust to you and to the, the, to the public, if IDA over the course of the next couple of months, doesn't it, you know, doesn't improve to the, to to what we would look. We can look to another provider, but at this point, on this 29th day, I, I believe I ask for your um, trust that this is the right thing to do at this particular time. Um, question for you. I don't I don't think the the questions were really for in reference to IDA. I think it was to in reference to the broker. Which is two separate things, correct? Yes, and it's two separate things, but the broker is not on on for Right, tonight. so this this this, is this resolution is strictly just for IDA, nothing correct. to do with the broker. Correct. Yes. Okay. But remember, there is a fixed cost that's involved, thirty-eight dollars per employee per month, <clears throat> which is about two hundred eight thousand dollars that goes to Fairview out of this contract. But if they are not the broker, then it would not go there, correct? Correct. What's okay. another one? Right. Another one. So am I, am I correct that the broker is not being compensated by IDA currently? No. No, no, you, you're not correct. That's No, right now, the broker is part of, and the broker happens to be um, Fairview. But Fairview was not approved by council. Correct. So they're still being paid? Yes, because cost? that was, a, yes, because that was on, uh, well, we did it in closed session, but I don't know if uh, John wants to weigh in on that. Tonight, we are providing a third party payer that if we don't have the third party payer, I will tell you this, I'm good, but I can't, we cannot meet the demands and the needs of our people. And um, so the answer is, may, may make a we're voting on IDA, so, the third party payer. May I make a suggestion that we move into closed session for legal advice for a brief period of time uh, regarding the IDA contract? Make a motion. Okay, at this time, resolution to go into closed session, whereas the Open Public Meeting Act, Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in circum circumstances, and whereas the Township Council is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, and whereas the Township Council wishes to discuss contractual issues, and whereas minutes will be kept, and once the matter involving the confidentiality of the above no longer requires confidentiality, the minutes can be made public. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Precipitate Troy Hills that the public be excluded from this meeting. So. Motion to adjourn into closed session made by myself, seconded by Mr. Stanton. Roll call. Um, Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes.
Motion to reconvene into open session. Motion. Motion made by Mr. Stanton, seconded by Mr. Peluso. Roll call. Uh, Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carew. Yes. Uh, Mr. Peluso, you had some questions. Uh, yes, we've uh, we had some questions uh, concerning the uh, resolution 2015-190 for the awarding of the contract for health benefits of insurance design administrators. Um, a couple of the concerns that I had was that uh, we did receive a letter from Nizavachia, uh, which is our accounting firm that did the audit for 2014. They noted that uh, the IDA was not in compliance, which created an audit exception for us. They did not have a SOC 1 report, and they did not have a bridge or a gap letter. And they also noted that there were four subservice organizations that were used for processing payments of claims, and at least two of them um, included financial transactions. Um, it's incumbent upon the township now to request IDA for the SOC reports of at least two of the subservice organizations from what he's indicating. Right. So um, he further stresses that uh, he wants to ensure these controls are being followed. So they're asking, the administration is asking us to approve <coughs> an insurance contract here in which the auditor uh, notes that they're still in violation from one year ago and they've been given an extension several um, times to comply from what i understand no that's not right according to the letter here it says the deadline was march 31st 2016 that they're going to give them for the bridge or the gap letter is that no correct? no uh ray you have to read this i mean ray rob. Uh, <laughs> uh rob you have to read this in concert with what the attorney is saying and what 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 ray actually did say he did get the initial sock report there's additional from IDA, he did, yes Yes, but that that that's that was my understanding. I'm not I'm not here tonight. Not we're not voting the, on the broker. We're voting on the it's IDA. It's not about the broker. It's, it's about, about the concern I had last week concerning the audit exception. Um, can I talk yeah. about that a second? Um, yes, um, the SOC report. Why this says this is because the SOC report was as of August first. Okay, so they they did all the audit up to that point. We asked them to get that done for the prior year. So what? Ray is saying to follow up. He agreed with the SOG report. However, as a follow-up, which would not be an audit exception, we should ask for a letter that um, called a bridge or a gap that says we're in compliance for this time period of August 1st through December 31st and ask for that before March 31st of 2016, yeah. and therefore we won't have any audit comment, which I totally agree with. This letter that <coughs> he sent to us is dated December 21st, so right. we have to do that going next week. We'll be calling you guys to do that. Um, <coughs> what did come up is, and, and IDA did know that when we discussed the SOC report, they also have third party people, so we are re going to request as the next step because this is a step-by-step -step process, we're going to ask for IDA to request the same report from their third-party administrators, and, and it continues on. So this is just a follow-up to continue our, our due diligence on, on our Right, but on you our also part. have to read it in concert with uh, Justin Marchetta's letter. He's saying that Ray is comfortable with this, that we will pursue it and that at this point there was no reason why not i mean you, you have the copy of the letter i made sure that you had you asked me for also an attorney's review of yes. what and in that letter they are saying they are comfortable with it moving forward we will continue to get this but at this point it doesn't preclude us moving forward with um going with ida because that, that was all all in the document and uh, I'm sorry for the lateness, but I didn't get it until today, and that's when you got the letter from the attorneys. I don't know. I didn't go into the closed session, so I hope that uh, um, the uh, attorney did, uh, that John mentioned that, uh, the letter. I mean, uh, I, we can read it into the record if you like, but, um, and here, here it is. Um, regarding the fiscal user controls that the uh, DES report recommends be implemented by end users of IDA services, it is our understanding that the township audit is working with the townships uh, with Ann to ensure that these controls are implemented and maintained. Given the, given the implementation of said controls and ideas of satisfaction of all other requirements under the townships solicitation of proposals pursuant to NJ, well, we are of the opinion that the township may award a contract to IDA at this time. And this is in conversation with Ray Serenelli. 
Justin and John, with the oversight approval, could not have sent this out if, in fact, uh, they weren't in concert with our auditor, your auditor. And um, Ray is comfortable with that. Ann has had conversations with um, uh, with Ray. Ray and Ann and I met uh, early on, and I said, I'm very disappointed. So the, I went right out of the office, went right to see the mayor. I said, we're going to call Paul, the head of um, IDA. the IDA, and we did, and we said it's very unacceptable. The SOC report should have been in. You said it was done August. Right. They said they were having difficulty getting it from the person who they actually had already paid for it. I said I want draft documents to get the fact that you did, <coughs> did pay for something that you haven't received yet. They promised the mayor that it would be better than that they would get the SOC report. We got the SOC report. As soon as we got the SOC report, we sent it to Ray Serenelli. He reviewed it, and he reviewed it in depth. Um, you asked for it in writing. I got it in writing. And what Ray is saying in the letter, if you, it, it, maybe read between the lines, what he's saying is we got the initial, the most important SOC report. However, they have, you know, he drilled down because he's very thorough. He's a very good auditor. But then in concert with co conversation with our attorneys, they are comfortable that all of this will, one, no longer be a audit comment, two, that they will provide the necessary documentation uh, that Ray is requesting, working in concert with our people, our own people here. So um, that I just wanted to make sure that there was clarity well, I, that. I agree with working with, with any company because I, I believe we were very patient working with them throughout the one year yes. that we've asked them to be compliant and we gave them a date to be compliant by in June and they were still not compliant. So I, I hope you understand my concerns is that... Um, I do know, understand as, your concerns, but please decision. understand my concerns that if this is voted down, there will be no one to deliver the service of insurance. Let me ask you a question, Ellen. Um, in regards to... Because we uh, don't have contract, enough manpower here. Because the contract was not provided to council either. We have not seen it. Uh, does the contract <coughs> give us provision that we can terminate the contract with ID at any yes, time? Yes, it does. Okay. So we can terminate the contract... As I said earlier, they, I said, do trust me deadline. with this and meet the dead... Oh, yeah, of absolutely. March 31st, 2016. For the, I'm, for I'm, the bridge I'm, gap I'm, letter... I'm, I mean, and having everything else I'm in comfortable order. with that. Absolutely, yes. yes. And we're getting it right from someone that okay. works right there. You know, because you have to, you know, one thing I'm asking you to do is understand my concerns as a, as a businessman and, and a finance expert is that, you know, I have to be concerned about the taxpayers of township and, and, and most importantly, I have to be worried about the employees and the safety of the employees. We cannot have our employees without insurance. But when you unpeel the onion back and you look at the year that's gone by, um, and looking at a vendor, any vendor this could be, um, I'm concerned, you know, a, as, as a taxpayer, I'm, a, I'm an employee too, I don't take benefits, but I'm an employee of the town and of the taxpayers, you know, that we have a vendor here that has not been compliant, um, you know, with, with an audit exception. And audit exceptions I, I, I take very heavily, I, I weigh upon that in making any decision. Um, and the seriousness of this is that, you know, they were in charge of, of $10 million or more of our funding uh, to a separate account, which they have the ability to take money out of that account. So I want to ensure that we have the right uh, checks and balances in place and that we don't have exposure. Um, you know, right. The additional and, concern and I will say, I will state for the record that um, Mr. Serenelli's um, record is impeccable. And I've worked with Ray Serenelli for 30 years, and he would not have put in writing that he was comfortable <coughs> if, in fact, he wasn't when he spoke with our attorney. Uh, they, they discussed it. Um, we've, we've, t we've talked to IDA. They know how important it is for us to get the additional, just like we have the surety, so there's surety that you asked for. It's there. That got done right away. The SOC report, very good. The surety was done in, in July, and it, it, did, it did, in all due respect, they did get it, but it took them seven months to get it to us, and we're, we're covered for a million dollars per occurrence. Um, you know, I have $10 million. And again, million dollars, and and again like Mr. More, and again, Councilman Peluso, I will say this for the record. I work on many, many things. There were other people involved interacting with the insurance people, um, and, and, and now that there is that person, that, that individual that was responsible, uh, maybe had too many things also on the, their plate. However, this, you talk about a sacred trust. I've negotiated with, with the, um, the people um, that, uh, that I would never want to um, ever, ever, and I know you're not saying that because I know, and, 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 uh, 
I will do my due diligence. And Ann, Ann can attest to the fact that when Ray and she came in to my office to go over some of the audit comments, when they said the SOC report still wasn't in, because I sat next to Ann in August when they, when they called up, we were here. We were and here. they said, we got it, it's done. And when it didn't happen, I literally, you know I have a sense of urgency. I jumped out of my chair I, and I, I went know you right in. I jumped on this immediately. Yes. Um, oh, I just, I, you know, I can't um, go my, back seven months or five months. My tolerance months. for a vendor that we're entrusting yeah. $10 million that I would have fired IDA a long time ago well, without a new one. I would have know, put an RFP out for another vendor right it's, away. It's not that easy. I mean, it, you know, the medical doesn't just stop in in January or December 31st. They can never stop medical. It doesn't. No, but hear me out. The, it doesn't because it was an audit comment. They weren't aware that they needed this report. They've had it done before. It's a huge audit. It takes months to have done. Not that it should have been done earlier. They had it finished, but then they weren't happy with the results of how it was written. It was strictly what it was written. We have the report now. We got the surety coverage. We had it all. Now we're going back and punishing or saying negative things about them when it's all good right now. I don't know why we're going backwards here. Well, I gotta be honest we're, not, with we're you. not going backwards. We're yeah, we stating are. that the facts of the matter is that Plus, it, let me it just took an inordinate amount of time to become partially compliant. They are partially compliant, they not are completely com compliant. We're, we're, They've we're complied. Our, let me say this. I'm sorry. But they are compliant to what we've asked. What was asked of them last year? They are compliant, okay? And I'll say this about being the CFO here. It's personal for me. I have my own personally responsible for the finances here. It is not something I take lightly, all right? I mean, you could all say, that. everybody could say whatever they want, but guess whose license it is? It's me. Absolutely. And I have to watch that dollar amount like it's, like it's my own. I don't allow anything other than the exact amount of money that is, is going to be paid to be paid out of that checkbook. And it's done every week. It's not done in a lump sum big amount of money, all right? And it's to the penny. And we reconcile it, we watch it, and I just want you to know that it's not it's not just throwing money into an account. And, and I'll say oh, this. Absolutely. I'll absolutely. say this you do a great in, job in, in, what in you response do. to Ann and Ellen. They worked on this due diligently. We've had meetings with IDA to get the SOC report. And like Ellen said, Ellen came to my office. We spoke to the president of the company. And he and he and I told him he had a deadline to get it to us. And he got it to us with, on, that, on that Friday. That being said, I feel I feel I don't vote, but I feel comfortable with Ray and, and the, the attorneys. Uh, opinions on it, and I think that you know, moving forward, they got to March uh, 31st, 2016. Right, correct. Yeah. And then you know, it, it's it's where it's at. But I will say this about Ann too: she comes to my office on many occasions when it comes to spending the taxpayers' dollars, and she 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 doesn't just go and spend it thriftily. She does it in a manner that I, as professional, and and I you know I have to commend her on that. Um, and whatever concern she has about anything in town. Uh, IDA or related anything she's on it and she just doesn't let nothing go by the wayside and again just in, to, in uh, not conclusion but um, when Ray because of the nature of Ray being so fastidious mm -hmm. that's when as Ann is saying they they were in compliance with the SOC report what he did is he drilled down further it wasn't part of the audit comment to get the second you know when he saw that he did his due diligence and said, we'll give them some time, but they need to comply with these additional um, reports because they have other other entities that are involved with them. So um, I, I, I know he's a bull, bulldog and, and you got two bulldogs here. You know, we're going we're to get it done and we're going to work with, with the company. And we have, um, you know, I hate to say it this way, but there is an out, in fact, if they're not compliant because I'm not satisfied. I, we work hard to make sure that Exactly. And, and if I, you know, I'm not, you know, this is, as you, as Ann said, you know, when, when a long time ago, a nice lady named Pat Fattaccia said, nothing personal. And we went out in the hallway and I said, Pat, it's all personal. This is not just a job to me. This is my avocation, my, my profession. And hey, I'm, I'm not perfect and I make mistakes, but I'm telling you, I'm in it and I'm in it till I get it done and we get it done right. So that's my commitment. That's Ann's commitment. That's, that's who you got here. And I'm not going anywhere. And you can find me. If I was home, I'd only be in Denville, so I'm not too far from here. So. Yeah, my, yeah, we live here. We're here Saturday, Sunday. And if Ellen's not happy, I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I, and, 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 you know, Councilman Peluso, I applaud you. Yes, you, you are passionate. You are someone that comes all the time. And I, 
and I love you for it. And people say, oh, is this nudge or is this? Or, no, we want, we not have to know what you're thinking or what you're asking for I so we can deliver. I question everything. I know you do. That's and you know you do. So I, and that is your responsibility, and you live up to it. Yes. And so we live up to try to comply with your request, the residents' request, the mayor's request, all the council <coughs> and, and personnel. And I'm not, I'm not stressing that I don't trust in, in both your judgments of, of what you do, but I'm saying that I'm, I'm just highly dissatisfied with the company for its inactions and uh, for creating an audit exception. Uh, and, and not realizing the, the, the priority to us um, and creating an exposure for us as well. And, and I'm glad Ann brought up the other point about the broker as well because I'm equally disappointed in the broker in the sense that the broker presented us a company that they didn't do their due diligence to see if this company was uh, compliant with the, the SOC report and had a, a liability insurance for us. So, you know, it's, it's not only uh, IDA, but it's the broker as well. They, they should have presented us with a more solid um, contract that, you know, we wouldn't have to even go through this today as we sit here. So, uh, fine, by the way. Just let you know. That's your personal opinion. It is. Well, a broker that presents anything to us that presents sure. a company that's not compliant and creates an audit exception is not good. Sure, I don't agree with you. Sorry, All respectfully, right, Mayor. Right. Well, l let me say this. Um, this SOC report is required for third party, you know, for third party payments. I mean, not every insurance company, um, I don't believe, needs that. I, I'm not really sure. I'm sure someone could speak to that better. But being self insured is why we need that report. And, and how, and I tell you what, I requested it from everyone now including the payroll good. companies yes. you know yes. absolutely so it's a learning experience that's where it all started with that's where it started i'm with very America. glad we have both of you on board because yeah. you're Oof. our eyes so thank Scares you the very hell out much. Of me. yeah no because her license is on the line and uh you know my integrity and my my, my name is on the line and and we take my it as a second good name is on the line <laughs> <laughs> any other questions thank you for letting thank us you. speak no, no don't you. let us down i won't let you down <laughs> Yeah, resolution 2015-190 resolution township council township for <laughs> Tory hills awarding the contract for health benefits to insurance design administrators motion made by mr stanton second seconded by mr depiro roll call mr depiro yes mr peluso understanding we need a third party uh, provider uh, administrator and that i have to protect our employees i have no choice but to approve it but i'm approving on a temporary basis i said deadline march 31st 2016. mr stanton yes mr valori yes mr Karifi. yes mr. Valori. <clears throat> Resolution 2015-201, Resolution of the Township Council, the Township of Sibley, Troy Hills, authorizing 2015 budget appropriation transfers. Motion made by Mr. Valori. Second. Seconded by Mr. Stanton. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Resolution 2015-202, Resolution of the Township Council, the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills authorizing an agreement with the City of Jersey City and the Jersey City Municipal Utilities Authority for the bulk purchase of potable water. Motion to approve the above resolution. Motion made by Mr. DePiro. Second. Seconded by Mr. Stanton. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. I just want to say for the record, I have not viewed the contract and I'm relying upon our business administrator, Ellen, and I do trust her opinion. Uh, so I'm going to vote yes. Thank you. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Karifi. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Resolution 2015-203, Resolution of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills, authorizing budget appropriation and reserve transfers. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Mr. Peluso, seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Karifi. Yes. Thank you. Okay, before I adjourn the meeting, I just wanted, this is Mr. Stanton's last uh, oh, yes. meeting. Just want to uh, personally thank him for his service. I know we had a lot of uh, <laughs> big <laughs> issues come up in town over the last few years. And uh, so again, I just want to thank you for your service. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. And one of these days, we'll have a certificate for you. <laughs> But for a plaque? No. <laughs> <laughs> but for a plaque. You don't want to talk on the wall yeah, out there. <laughs> hey, at this time, I entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Thanks.
Motion. Motion made by Mr. Peluso. Second. Seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Karifi. Yes. Good night, everyone. Happy New Year, everyone.